Hi everybody. So, uh, today I don't have anything to pick for you, but I do have this uh, rather unusual lock. You don't see it as a complete set very often, at least in the U.S. Uh, this is the Fiché 480. Uh, it was very popular in New York, particularly, back in the uh, 70s, until it was discovered that it did have a few flaws. Uh, now this is a version that is housed in a, uh, similar to a Medico bodyguard, this very thick, heavy steel housing, uh, which is designed to give you all sorts of brute force resistance, uh, has a rim tail piece, and these bolts fit all the way through the door, and then it has a series of washers and nuts that go over the end to protect it. So we're going to get those out of the way. Now the key also is a bit unusual. Come on, there we go. Uh, because you'll see in profile it is shaped sort of like an H or a capital I. It has this long, very short rib on the top to index it to the keyway, and both faces are cut, and each side is slightly different, and once we get it apart, you'll see why, but this does still work entirely. There we go. Keys in. And turn it one way. Turn it the other way, and remove. So, pretty solid uh, and very tricky if you want to try to pick it. But we're not going to do that today. Instead, I'm just going to do a teardown. So, I'm going to put the key aside for now because, interestingly, we don't actually need the key to disassemble this thing. If we flip it around to the back, once you've dismounted it from the door, you just have these two screws holding the whole thing together. So we're going to take off the bottom, put that aside, take off the top, Put that aside, and we're going to lay it down here, and we just lift this back plate off. We'll put that over there for now, and once you do that, you can simply lift the entire lock cylinder out, like that, and what gets left behind usually is this face plate, which fits into the front of the lock, both as additional uh, protection to stop you from drilling it or attempting to pull the cylinder, and this little uh, thin spring steel spacing ring, which just helps uh, keep it turning, because you'll see actually the outermost plate on this thing has a version of the keyway uh, cut into it. Uh, so that's actually your outermost layer of protection for the cylinder against brute force. And we'll just get that over there. So, now that we have this open, we'll take the faceplate off, put it down, and you can see that this is a sidebar lock. We have one sidebar here. Come on. One sidebar here, and one over here. And so all we need to do to disassemble it, actually, is tip it over and push it out. And there we go. So now we can put the housing aside. This uh, ring helps hold all the tailpiece parts together and fits into the barrel of the body. Here's the tailpiece, just lifts right out. There's this little metal bar here. Come on. And that lifts right out. And that's just there to both act as a spacer for the tailpiece and to uh, act as a second tip stop for the key. So we drop that on the side. Now we're just going to have to be very careful to use our fingers to keep the sidebars in. And if we release pressure very slowly, here comes one with its springs. 
you flip it around to the other side. And here comes the other. And now we can see the actual mechanism. There we go. Uh, now we'll get the key back for a second so you can actually see how this thing works. So, yeah, make sure it's lined up. Okay, so as I insert the key, you'll see these, I always think of them as levers. Some literature refers to them as wafers, but they really act more like levers because you'll see as I slide it in, they rotate. And now you can see the very deep false gates have all lined up so that the sidebar, if we get it back for, for a moment, kind of tricky to do this through the camera. There we go. With all those gates aligned, that sidebar slides right in all the way. So take that back out. And now, get the key out, and I'm going to use this probe to reach in here. There we go. And there are these two uh, pressure fit roll pins in the front. And if I press in correctly, no, that's not seated properly. There we go. I think we should do it. Come on. There we go. Bear with me one second, folks. to tell you. I had this working before. There we go. Okay. Okay, so I was able to use that probe to push the retaining pin out, and now you'll see two of the levers have already started to lift out. So I'm just going to slowly and very carefully draw this the rest of the way, and we'll put it aside there. And now, I can use these tweezers to pull one lever out, and there it is. So you can see where the true gate is, and you can see where there are three false gates. And you can also see this little circular section here that the pin fits through, and it will just rock back and forth. Now, if we... I don't want to drop these everywhere. We're just going to be very careful with how we maneuver this. This little brass guy looks like the driver pin from a normal pin tumbler lock. It is actually a small cap that fits over a spring that causes the lever to push out and return to battery. And if I can get the light on it, that little glint you see at the bottom there is a ball bearing, and that's what the key actually interacts with. So as the key reaches in, it pushes on that ball bearing, which pushes on this end of the lever and causes it to rotate around that pin, like so. So that is the whole thing. Uh, now, like I said, these uh, were rather popular up until the uh, 70s and early 80s when people in New York particularly were very uh, concerned about 
the security of their doors, and uh, unfortunately it was discovered that the fit and finish of these parts is so tight that just uh, blowing some some dirt or metal filings in there uh, along with a little bit of glue or heavy oil would cause this whole thing to seize up and stop operating, which not great for reliability. Uh, now if you're really interested in these, uh, there's not a lot written about them in English. Uh, Skylar Town has a really great video, I'll add a link to that in the description. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're gonna have to, I hope you have a uh, decent working knowledge of French. So, until next time, have fun and happy picking.